Praise the Lord. I can't hear your voice. Are you happy to be back? The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. We're back to Bagada. And it's a wonderful thing to be at the headquarters. I pray the Lord will keep us alive and keep us fervent. And the word of the Lord will enrich every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name for the Bible study. We thank you, Lord, because we know your spirit is here to lead us, to guide us into all truth, and to teach your word. We pray, Lord, that your word will penetrate every heart tonight in Jesus' name. We pray for all who are connected with us everywhere as you are blessing your people here. Bless your people everywhere in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We started about two weeks ago. And we've learned from chapter 1, verses 1 through to 25. Tonight we're starting with verse 26. Please open your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And then in verse 27 it says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things that are mighty and base things of the world, the things which are despised as God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, that's the thing that appear nothing, to bring to naught, to bring to nothing the things that are. And then in verse 29, that no flesh to glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is of God made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as he has written, he that glorious, let him glory in the Lord. Tonight, as we look at those verses of scripture, we're looking at the condition of God's choice for full redemption. He chooses people like he chose Abraham, like he chose Isaac, like he chose Jacob, like he chose the men of old, those Israelites, as they came to believe in him and they entered into covenant relationship with him. He chose them. Not only that, as you come to people like David, people like Solomon, and other people like prophets of the Old Testament, he chose them. He chose them into relationship with him. He chose them into covenant relationship with him. And now we're told he has chosen us. The people that believe today, I'm sure you remember that when Jesus was talking to his own disciples, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I've ordained you. I put you in place that you'll go forth and bear fruit, and your fruit shall remain, and your fruit should abide. He said, have I not chosen you twelve? And then one of you is a devil, a backslider. He chose the disciples. He chose the apostles. And then he said he has chosen us out of the world. And now Paul, the apostle by the Spirit of God, now concentrates on this choice. And we see the condition of the choice. 
and we see the continuation in the choice and we see the consecration of the people who are chosen and we see the continuation until the final day and then he gives us not only redemption initial redemption continual redemption and redemption full redemption until the final redemption and all by the choice of the lord the condition of god's choice for full redemption the message tonight is divided to three parts number one the redemption of repentant weak men men who are weak in themselves men who are weak by nature and men who are weak in life and yet they hold on to the horns of the altar of the lord they come to the lord they repent of their sins they turn away from sin and they turn to the savior that repentance that turning that holding on to the lord and that believing on the lord made the church the lord to look on them and to choose them and as you do that in your life as you have done that in your life and you turned away from your past you turned away from the works of your hand you turned away in total repentance you turned away in transparent repentance you turned away from scripture with scriptural repentance it makes a choice of you and it gives you a redemption in that redemption there's forgiveness in that redemption there is salvation in that redemption there is conversion the redemption of repentant weak men point number two the rejection of refined wealthy mockers the people that mock at the salvation of the lord and they mock at the wisdom of god and they mock at the plan of salvation the Lord rejects them because they reject salvation. They reject repentance. They reject redemption. And because they reject the wisdom of God, thinking that their own wisdom is greater than the wisdom that gave us the cross, that gave us Calvary, that gave us Christ to die for us because they are mockers of the salvation of the Lord, because they are mockers of the plan of redemption. That's why they are rejected. They think they are refined. And they think they are religious enough to save themselves. The rejection of refined wealthy mockers. And now point number three is the renewal of reconciled washed members. As we come to Christ and become members of the body of Christ. And we become members of the family of God. And we are washed. And we are cleansed. And we are poured poured from our sins and washed from our sins it takes us from the death of sin from the degradation of sin and from the defilement and depravity of our lives in the past it brings us to become members of the family of god he renews us he regenerates us he changes our lives it transforms us it turns us to be new creatures in christ reconciled to the lord and now members in the body of Christ were washed and cleansed and purged and purified the renewal of reconciled washed members let's come to point number one in point number one we have the redemption of repentant weak men as we read once again from first Corinthians chapter 1 and we're looking at verse 26 first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 for you see your calling brethren these were believers he had said from verse 1 he was writing to the church in at Corinth Paul an apostle by the will of God writing to the church the ecclesia the one that is called out called out of sin called out of their past called out of their evil and now he chooses them he converts them he brings them into the kingdom and he calls them he says you have seen your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the after the world not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty and not many noble are called then in verse 27 he says but god has 
chosen the foolish things of the world. That is, the people who are supposed to be foolish, they don't have the philosophy of the world, they don't have the wisdom of the world, they don't have the principles of the world, they do not have everything the world calls great, yet God has chosen them. And he says, you have chosen, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound and to confuse the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. In verse 28, he tells us, and the base things of the world and the things that are despised as God chosen. Have you seen the repeated word there, chosen, 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 the Lord has chosen the despised things of the world, yea, the things which are not to bring to naught, to bring to nothing things that are. He brings to nothing the philosophy of the world. He brings to nothing the plan of the world. He brings to nothing all the ideologies of the world. He brings to nothing all the religion of the world. He chooses the people who will go the direction of God and who will who will take the plan of God, the plan of redemption. As we're thinking about the redemption of repentant weak men, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the general call of all men in the world. He wants to choose everyone. He calls everyone. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. He doesn't want anyone to perish. That's why we're told the general call of all men in the world. Look at John chapter 3 verse 16. He tells us in John chapter 3 verse 16. He says, for God so loved the world, the entire world, all the world, all the people in the world without exception for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life no one has an excuse to be lost you don't have an excuse to be lost because God has chosen and God has called everyone there is a general call to the entire world to every one in the world but before that call will reach you and before that call will become efficacious and effective in your life there must be repentance and he wants everybody to repent he wants everybody to so turn to understand their need of salvation and the need of conversion and the need of eternal life and to turn away from their sin so that they can make use effectually of the general call he has given to everyone in acts of the apostle chapter 17 verse 30 acts chapter 17 verse 30 it says and the times of this ignorance god winked at but now look at this look at this but now on mondays all men everywhere to repent if he doesn't want them saved i will he command everyone everywhere to repent if he knows he only wants to choose the people that he had uh, predestined and he had chosen beforehand how will he tell everybody to repent but now he's telling us there is a general call and god now will overlook the past and he calls all men everywhere to repent he tells us in verse 31 the reason is calling every man and the reason is calling everyone and he's saying we shall repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead and he did that for everyone he raised Christ Jesus from the dead to provide salvation to provide redemption and to provide eternal life for everyone whosoever will believe. He gives us, he tells us with assurance, without any shadow of doubt, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness but look at this it's long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish 
not willing that any should perish. There should be no doubt in your heart. Salvation number one is for you. Salvation number two is for everyone around you. Salvation number three is for everyone in the whole wide world. And if you will take that general call that comes to everyone and the general love of God that comes to everyone and you turn away from sin and you hold on to the Savior, salvation will be yours. It says, it's not willing that any should perish, but that all, all men everywhere, all men in every generation, all men in our congregation here, all men in every congregation, congregation that God himself will see you repenting and see you turning so that all shall come to repentance in first Timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 3 first Timothy chapter 2 we're looking at verse 3 it tells us therefore this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior was that that is good in the sight of the Lord our God our Savior our Redeemer look at verse 4 who will have in your Bible there how many people I said your Bible there how many people you will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth that's his will that's his desire that's his plan that's the result of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants, he desires, he plans all men to be saved. Now, many are called, but few are chosen. That leads us to a second thought here. The gracious choice of the meek and the weak. The gracious choice of the meek and the weak let's come back to first corinthians chapter one reading from verse 26 there it says for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men understand that he didn't say not any wise men but not many wise men some few wise men respond some few wise women respond some few wise people respond, but not many. The poor and the majority, the meek and the majority, the lowly and the majority, the downtrodden and the majority, the people that have nothing of this world, no position in this world, then the majority. That's why it says, you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, he doesn't say not any mighty some people are mighty and they realize they need salvation and some people are great in the world and they realize they need salvation they come and the lord doesn't despise them doesn't push them away because they are mighty or because they are noble or because they are wise but not many not many are yielding to the gospel it says not many mighty and not many noble are called it says in verse 27 it said but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise the foolish things of the world the people that do not have the wisdom of the world they are in the majority of those who have responded and therefore they are chosen and then he says god has chosen the weak things of the world those who feel they're strong and those who feel they're mighty many of them are not coming but the majority of the people that come and they're chosen are the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and then in verse 28 it tells us it says and base things of the world you understand those who are the lower level at the lower rung of the ladder of the ladder the base things of the world and the things which are despised as god chosen yea the things that are not the people that the world will call nothing or they call them non-entity they don't have the wisdom of the world they don't have the uh, philosophy of the world they don't have the power the position of the people of the world they do not have the wealth of the world and so they say they are nothing they don't reckon with them and these are the people that know they need salvation and they come to the lord and the lord has chosen the things that are not to bring to naught the things that are 
what did he do how did he do it so that you will know how to do it as well so that the same redemption they got you will get and the same salvation they obtained you will obtain it tells us in romans chapter 10 verse 9 romans chapter 10 verse 9 this is the tape they took this is the decision they make and this is the faith they put in christ so that their salvation will be real and definite in romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved all those that were chosen all those that were redeemed all those that were saved all those that came into the kingdom of god and they had the assurance and the voice of the spirit and the witness of the spirit bearing witness in their heart they are now children of god doubt is gone the weakness is gone their guilt gone their condemnation gone here is what they did they made jesus the lord of their lives and it says very clearly that if thou shalt believe in your heart that jesus christ is lord your lord in particular and then you understand that the father god has raised him from the dead and you believe that was for you and you embrace that as for you it says thou shalt be saved but now he tells us there's something that comes along with that salvation never forget this in your heart in your mind that salvation does just not does not come empty-handed it comes with righteousness look at verse 10 it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness when you believe when you are chosen when you are redeemed when you are regenerated when you are converted it comes with righteousness you came with your unrighteousness you came to the lord and believing in the lord it takes that unrighteousness away it takes the guilt away it takes the weakness away and it takes the depravity it takes the defilement away now that you believe with the heart man believeth unto righteousness show me a man who says i believe i'll show you a man that has righteousness righteousness in his heart righteousness in his mind righteousness in his practice righteousness in his behavior righteousness in his interaction because that act of believing the lord transfers the righteousness of christ into him it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation it tells us in titus chapter 2 reading from verse 11 what comes with salvation as salvation comes to you titus chapter 2 reading from verse 11 it says for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men it's available for you available for me it has appeared unto all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly when where in this present world that's where salvation comes that's when salvation comes while you're still here on earth that's when Jesus becomes your savior. That's when you turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. And the Lord makes you to have salvation. And lo and behold, as you have salvation, that witness of the Spirit of God in you leads you to the confession and to the realization that now there's godliness, now there's righteousness, and now there's sobriety. It says that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world i pray that will be the experience of everyone in jesus name it tells us in matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 3 in matthew chapter 5 verse 3 it says blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven 
the people who are meek, the people who are lowly, the people who are not proud, the people who don't think my religion will save me, my character will save me, my good works will save me. They know they're poor and they're so poor they don't have anything to pay for salvation. Neither the works of our hand nor the religion of our life can pay for salvation. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It tells us in verse 4, blessed are they that mourn. They realize they're sinners and they realize the condemnation, the damnation that will come upon them because cause of their sin, they realize the pain, the pangs, and the punishment that will come upon them because of their sin, because of that they mourn, because of that they cry, because of that they are sorrowful. And then when they look around at who can save them, there's no man on earth, whether from their own tribe or from the world around them, that can save them. There's only one name that is given among men whereby we can be saved and it is the name of Jesus and then they realize that if they're going to have that savior as theirs they must turn away from sin they mourn for their sins blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and then in verse 5 he tells us there blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth when Christ comes to reign upon the earth and he comes with his own sins to reign upon the earth they'll be be with him and he says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth and then in verse 6 now these are the people as they come to salvation as they come to redemption as they come to real conversion and intimacy with the Lord there is something they are passionate about there's something you know, they are pursuing every moment of their lives blessed are they with no hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. If you have the experience of a new baby coming into the world, that new baby coming into the world to show the mark of life, the stage of living of that child, there is hunger and there is thirst and the child cries for water as he comes to this world. If somebody is actually born again, if somebody is truly born again, if somebody is a real child of God, from the time you come into the kingdom, from the time you are born into the kingdom, you thirst and you hunger after righteousness. The salvation you have got, the salvation you receive, brought you into the kingdom and it makes you thirsty and it makes you hungry blessed are they with no hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled show me the person that says I'm born again and there is no thirst for righteousness there's no hunger for righteousness only the hunger for money the hunger for prosperity the hunger for popularity and the hunger for the wealth of the world and the hunger and the passion and the desire for prosperity and success that's not being born again when you're born again and the life of God the life of Christ comes into you and you have the nature of the Lord you thirst after that nature and you 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 you're passionate after that nature and you pursue after that nature that's why after you are poor in spirit and then you are meek in spirit and then you mourn because of your past sins and you come to the Lord now. He says, blessed are they which do thirst and hunger after righteousness for they shall be filled. I pray that evidence of salvation, that evidence of conversion, the thirst and the hunger will be in every one of our lives in Jesus name. Give me a good church. Amen. But you know, as you come back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, reading from verse 26, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, looking at verse 26, it says, You see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. It tells us something here. It doesn't say not any, as I've explained to you, some who are wise, some 
who are mighty, some who are noble, they know what their wisdom that will not give them salvation. They know what their might that will not give them salvation. They know what their nobility that will not give them salvation. Because of that, they see that all the works of their hand all the wealth they have, all the wisdom they have, all their position in the world, all the contacts they have in the world couldn't save them and yet they know the importance of salvation, they know the importance of getting to heaven after they die because they see the poor people die, rich people die, they see that weak people die and strong people die and they see that the nobles die as well as the ignoble because they know end is I mean, one day they come to the real wisdom of God and the real wisdom of God makes them to have a glorious conversion. I come to number three there now, glorious conversion of some mighty and wise. Some who are mighty and wise yet they are wise enough to know that whatever they have on earth will not replace salvation. Whatever they have on earth will not give them relationship with God. They are so wise and they are mighty enough to humble themselves and to seek the glorious conversion from the Lord. Let me show you some of them. In Luke chapter 19 we are looking at verse 2. Here there is Zacchaeus, a man at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're told that Zacchaeus was of little stature, and therefore she could, he could not see the Lord, and the Lord Jesus was to pass that way, and eventually he climbed up a sycamore tree. When he climbed up that sycamore tree, as Jesus was passing by, he got there, and when Jesus got there, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down, make his, for today I must abide in your house. And we're told that Zacchaeus came down He came down joyfully When he came down This was a rich man This was a mighty man And this was a wealthy man And yet he gave himself to the Lord What an example for you What an example for me That whatever we have in the world Whatever wisdom we have Whatever might we have Whatever wealth we have Whatever riches we have We we'll still need to give ourselves totally unto the Lord So that that even though not many mighty are called, if you are mighty yet you will be called. Not many wise men after the flesh are called but if you are wise in the world you will use your wisdom to come to the Lord and to have the, and to have the salvation of God. Not many noble are called. If you are noble yet you will come to the Lord and your nobility will not hinder you from the salvation of the Lord. We're told in verse 8 of that in Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19 verse 8 it says Zacchaeus stood, stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. That was his repentance. You know, it's the same thing for the poor and for the rich, the same condition. If the poor is going to get saved, he must repent. If the rich is going to get saved, he must repent. It's the same for the ignorant and the wise. If the ignorant is going to get saved, he must repent. If the wise is going to get saved, he must repent. It's the same for the noble and the ignoble. If the ignorant, ignoble man or woman is going to be saved, he must repent. If the noble and the greatest people on this earth, if they're going to be saved, they must repent. And here Zacchaeus said, I repent, I've been stingy, I've been covetous, and I've run after all the people and taken their things, but now I bring practical, practical repentance and I give away all those evil things that I've done. And then in verse 9, Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. But understand, a son of Abraham a Jew does not that did not make him to have salvation automatically but now when that son of Abraham repented when that son of Abraham called upon the Lord when that son of Abraham said I'm going to jettison my past I repent of my past I'm going to follow the Lord now with all my heart all my soul all my mind that's the time salvation came unto this son of Abraham whoever you are
whatever is your birth marks and whatever is your stature except you come to the position of repentance and giving yourself totally to the Lord and holding on to the Lord I will not let you go you are my savior you are my redeemer I believe on the sacrifice you paid for me on the cross of Calvary except that happens there cannot be salvation salvation comes as a result of repentance and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ you know about uh, the, the man that came from Ethiopia the eunuch of Ethiopia. He was, uh, he was a rich man. He was a wealthy man, a man of position and a man of honor. And yet it was when he believed and said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. That's when salvation came. That's when redemption came. And the same thing today, you are a political office holder and you are a great man in the world. This is the only way salvation can come. God cannot lower the standard and say, yes, because you are rich, because you have position, I'm, not going, I'm going to overlook Calvary. I'm going to overlook the sacrifice of Christ so you can be saved in a special way. Nobody gets saved in any special way. It is the same way Jesus Christ the son of God who, so, who surrendered everything and sacrificed everything that's how we get saved and then Jesus said in verse 10 he said for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost Zacchaeus was lost and all those wise people mighty people and the, the wealthy people all of them they are lost and it is only Jesus Christ that brings salvation and as we believe today salvation is yours in jesus name i said salvation is yours in jesus name and we thank God that it's not only the people who are rich in the marketplace, the people who are wealthy in the marketplace, the people who have the things of the world in the marketplace, even the religious people. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, reading from verse 7, Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, I'm looking at verse 7, it says, And the word of the Lord increased. It's not talking about the preaching of the Bible here now. It's talking about the word of God received here received there received there and the word of the lord increased the word of salvation penetrating every heart the word of salvation coming to everyone and that word of the lord increased and then he said the number of disciples became multiplied in jerusalem greatly look at this now and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. A great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. These were people, although they were, they, they were people of position and people of power and people of authority in their assemblies, in their congregations and in their, and in their synagogues, yet they believed when they saw that Jesus Christ is the Savior and that there's no other name whereby we can be saved except the name of Jesus. The word of God got into them as the word of God is going to get to you. It will penetrate your heart. It will penetrate your soul. And the same experience that other people have had, although not many mighty and not many wise and not many noble, the same experience they have had when the word of God penetrates into you, you will have that same experience in Jesus' name salvation for everyone redemption for everyone conversion for everyone righteousness for everyone a new life a transformed life for everyone in jesus name let's come to point number two now point number two is the rejection of refined wealthy mockers as some other wealthy people were saved the majority of them were mocking as some other refined people were saved the majority of them were mocking and the people that mock whether they are young or old the people that mock the plan of salvation, whether the Jews or Gentiles, the people that mock the plan of God's salvation, whether they are philosophers or they are errant, illiterate people in the jungle, anyone that mocks the plan of God's salvation, whatever else he has, is not going to have heaven. 
It's not going to have redemption. It's not going to have the power of God and the witness of the Holy Spirit that tells us that this is the way of salvation. Let's look at three things. Say number one, the passionate preaching of willing ministers. The passionate preaching of willing ministers. And of course, you know, Paul the Apostle is one of those willing ministers. Passionate in preaching and powerful in preaching, penetrating in preaching, persuasive in preaching. And if you're going to be a minister that will bring souls into the kingdom, your heart must be there. You're passionate. The Spirit of God must indwell you. You're powerful. And then you must have a focus that the reason you are called to the ministry is that people will be saved. You must be purposeful. And then you must learn how to get the word into the hearts of people. You must be persuasive. And so we find that the people in the New Testament and the people in any generation, every generation and this generation that preach the gospel of the Lord, they are passionate people who are preaching with willing mind and a willing consecration and a willing commitment in the service of the Lord. Number two, the proud protest of wealthy mockers. The proud protest of wealthy mockers. And then number three, the perpetual peril, the perpetual pain, the perpetual punishment, the perpetual peril of worldly wise men. Those who are wise beyond their salvation. Those who are wise beyond their redemption. Those who are wise beyond their destiny of getting to heaven. Those worldly wise men will have perpetual punishment, perpetual pain, perpetual peril. Let's come to number one is the passionate preaching of willing ministers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God, the preaching of the cross. That's what Paul the Apostle preached, the preaching of the cross as the only way for salvation. The preaching of the cross as the only avenue by which we're saved. The preaching of the cross as the only effective means that gets us saved. He said to the people of the world, to those Jews and uh, to those philosophers, they are foolishness because they're going to perish. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. He tells us in verse 27, in verse 27, he says, For God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And, the, and God has chosen the weak things uh, to confound uh, the things that are mighty. And then in verse 28, it tells us by that preaching of the cross, he has chosen the base things of the world and the things that are despised as God chosen ye, the things which are not to bring to naught the things are. Why? Look at verse 29. In verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. It's that the people bring forth the word of God, the mighty word of God, the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then people accept that gospel and they receive that gospel and embrace that gospel and personalize that gospel and say that promise is mine. That salvation is mine. That death of the cross, that death of Christ on the cross is mine. He did it for me. I believe that. I hold on to that. Salvation comes because of that persuasive and the powerful and the passionate preaching of those willing ministers. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. Here is Paul the apostle saying, I am debtor, but to the Greeks, 
and to the barbarians, but to the wise and to the unwise. You see, he's not saying that no wise man can be saved. He says he's data to them. The people that are wise and the people that are not wise. He's a data to them and he owes them the preaching of the gospel. The same thing with you and I. We owe the people the preaching of the gospel. Whoever they are, they might think they are very high. They might think they are very great. They might think they are very wise. And they might think that they're on top of the world. All the same, we respect whatever they have. We respect their personality. But we come to tell them the gospel, to show them the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that can give unto them what their wealth cannot give them. What their wisdom cannot give them. It says, I am debtor to the Greeks. I'm debtor to the barbarians. It says both to the wise and to the unwise. It says in verse 15, it says in that verse 15, it says, So as much as in me is, their wealth will not intimidate me. As, as, as much as in me is, their nobility will not intimidate me. And their might will not intimidate me. The very fact that they are philosophers and the very fact they are highly placed in whatever field they are, all that will not intimidate him, Paul the Apostle, and all that will not intimidate you. Whatever achievement other people have got, you know that without salvation, vision they cannot be saved therefore Paul the apostle said and you ought to say and I ought to say so as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also why look at verse 16 it says in verse 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ how can you be ashamed of the gospel of Christ that gives us the greatest sea you can have on earth, the greatest sea you can have that will take you to heaven, the greatest ticket and the greatest certificate and the greatest means that you can have that will take you to the very presence of God. The gospel, the message of the gospel, the grace in the gospel, the goodness of God in the gospel, the salvation, the conversion, the redemption that brings you to the presence of God. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew force and to the Greek to the Jew force and to the Greek but you know the proud protesters who protest against that saving gospel there are proud protesters who protest against that gracious gospel there are proud protesters who protest against that sanctifying gospel Look at this, number two now here, the proud protest of wealthy mockers. And we're looking at uh, First Corinthians and we're looking at chapter, we're looking at chapter one and looking at verse 27. It says, but God has chosen, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, those who are wise and they are protesting against the wisdom of God. The worldly wise people who are protesting against the wisdom of the cross. They are not saved. They are confounded. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. Those who are mighty and they are using their might, they are using their position in the world to belittle salvation and to trample salvation under and to tread over salvation and to put salvation in the mud to them there are other things that are more important than salvation they look at you and they laugh they say i have money how much do you have i have certificate how much do you have I have the wealth of this world how much of that do you have and because of that they protest against the salvation of God and the wisdom of God that grants us that salvation. 
in verse 29 it says in verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence those who are protesting against the plan of god they're glorying in the presence of god but god will not allow anyone to glory in his presence and look at revelation chapter 3 we're looking at verse 17 this how why some people protest this why some people mock this why they say i have this i have that i don't need any other thing because thou says revelation chapter 3 verse 17 because thou says i am rich that's all they have and increase with goods that's all they have and have need of nothing they have all the things on earth they don't have need of anything coming from heaven salvation is from heaven redemption is from heaven the witness of the spirit is from heaven the title deed of the mansions on high that's from heaven they have all these things on earth and because of all the things they have amassed on earth they say i have need of nothing coming from heaven and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked that's why those mockers mourn and look at what the lord is telling them now in verse 19 in verse 19 it says as many as i love i rebuke and chasing those mighty people god says i love you and therefore i rebuke you because you are trusting in your might and you're not trusting in the salvation of the lord those wise people, worldly wise, I rebuke you because you are trusting in your wisdom. You are not trusting in the wisdom of the plan of redemption. Those who are noble, I rebuke you because you are trusting in your nobility and you are not trusting in, in the renewal, the regeneration that Christ gives us to come into the kingdom. I rebuke you and therefore I want you to turn and repent as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, be zealous, therefore, what's that saying? As you have been zealous for might turn out be zealous for repentance and salvation as you have been zealous to become an office holder in that place be a zealous now in seeking after the salvation of the lord so you can be saved as you have been zealous after having certificate you have been zealous after building houses you have been zealous after amassing health you have been zealous after all these things that will not take you to heaven now turn around and be zealous for the salvation of the Lord. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase him. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And I pray that the salvation of the Lord will be yours, will be ours all together in Jesus' name. Let me have a good, good amen. amen. If those who are supposed to be saved, and the promise comes to them and the privilege comes to them and they don't take hold of that privilege what happens to them number three is a perpetual peril a perpetual pain the perpetual punishment of worldly wise men they're wise after the things of the world they're not wise after the things of heaven we're looking at first corinthians chapter one and we're reading from verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the worldly wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. That is, those who say they are so wise beyond Bible, beyond Calvary, beyond Christ, beyond repentance they cannot lower themselves humble themselves to the doors and receive the salvation of the lord they're wiser than the wisdom of god the lord says i will destroy the wisdom of the worldly wise and i will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent and then in verse 20 it tells us from 20 where is the wise are they in heaven no not if they reject christ and where is the scribe 
Are they with God in heaven? No, not when they reject Christ. Where is the disputer of this world? The one who is always wanting to have a debate. You see, you talk about Christ. Let me present another one to you. Let's come to a debate. Where is the debater and where is the disputer of this world? You talk about salvation by grace. They say, let me talk to you about salvation by the work of my hand. They want to debate. They don't want to take the goodness of God. They don't want to take all that Christ has provided. All they're looking for is what will debate it. And they use their brain to lose their heart. But that's why it says where is the disputer of this world has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world it tells us in verse 21 it says for after the after, after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew him not the world by their education knew him not the world by their philosophy knew him not the world by their traditional religion knew him not the world by their debate and discussion they knew him not it says after in the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew him not it pleased god that by the foolishness of preaching they call preaching foolish he said discussion is better dialogue is better debate is better but one man is standing there and is talking about christ about the cross about conversion they say he doesn't allow the people to reply him and to react to him and to argue it out but you know it's by that preaching of the cross by that preaching of christ by that preaching of the grace that comes through christ that those who believe are saved look at that verse 21 he pleased god by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe to save them that believe i pray you'll be a believer i said i pray you'll be a believer and the gospel of the lord will work for you in jesus name look at first corinthians chapter 2 i'm reading there from verse 7 first corinthians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 7 it says but we speak wisdom the wisdom of god in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world before the world unto our glory it says the people cannot recognize that but this is wisdom whatever gets us saved in the plan of God, in the redemptive purpose of God, that is wisdom. Whatever prepares us for heaven here from earth, that is wisdom. Whatever opens the windows of heaven that we can look up by faith and see that there is heaven and this is the ladder and this is the only way to get there, that is wisdom. And that is the wisdom, the wisdom of the gospel and the wisdom of Calvary and the wisdom of the cross that God has ordained for us that we get to heaven by the wisdom that God ordained before the world for our glory look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 which none of the princes of this world with none of the mighty in this world which none of the noble in this world which none of the wise people of this world knew not they did not know it says uh, for a day known age they would not have crucified the lord of glory but thank god what they have rejected you have received what they have rejected i have received and what they lack we have they don't have salvation we have salvation i said we have salvation we have redemption and we have the grace of god and we have the witness of the spirit in our heart we're going to heaven anybody going to heaven there i said anybody on your way to heaven there the lord confirm it in jesus name and let's come to point number three now in point number three this is the renewal of reconciled washed members the renewal the regeneration 
the righteousness, the redemption of those who are reconciled to God and those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb and those who are integrated into the body of Christ. They are now members of Christ. The renewal of reconciled, washed members in verse 30 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus you are in Christ Jesus. You are not outside. You are not arguing outside. You are not debating outside. And you are not rejecting outside. You are not standing outside the fence. And then reacting negatively to the gospel. But it says now of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who of God is made unto us wisdom. Your wisdom is not found in the library. Christ is made unto us wisdom. Your wisdom is not found in the ivory tower. God has made Christ unto us wisdom. Your wisdom is not found in the depths of the sea, in the heights of the mountain. It's not found in the, uh, in the habitation of the philosopher. Your wisdom is found in Christ, who of God is made unto us wisdom wisdom and righteousness your righteousness is not on the altar of the Jews your righteousness is not in the shrine of religion your righteousness is not anywhere your righteousness is in Christ your righteousness is not the work of your hand your righteousness is not the money the pastors do you are paying your righteousness is in Christ and sanctification your sanctification is not I'm talking turning over a new leaf. I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to clean my ways. I'm trying to keep quiet. I'm trying not to talk whenever people offend me. It says your sanctification is in Christ and your redemption, total redemption, final redemption, full redemption, redemption of your spirit, of your soul, of your body, your redemption now, your redemption through life and your redemption that takes you to heaven. It says your redemption is in in Christ and then in verse 31 he tells us that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord he that gives any testimony I am saved on the basis of what the Lord has done I'm sanctified on the basis of what the Lord has done I'm confident I'm going to get to heaven only built on Christ I'm confident I'm a child of God I'm a member of the body of Christ on the basis of Christ only you are not rejoicing because of the work of your hand you are not rejoicing because of the labor of your hand you are not rejoicing because of any good work you have done he that glorieth in salvation he that glorieth in sanctification he that glorieth in righteousness he that glorieth in redemption he that glorieth at all in anything let him glory in the Lord the renewal of reconciled washed members three things were four things we're looking at number one Fresh wisdom from Christ. Number two, fruitful righteousness through Christ. Number three, faultless sanctification by Christ. And number four, full redemption in Christ. Look at that verse 30 again in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Fresh wisdom from Christ. It says, of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom. Who of God is made unto us wisdom. The people that say they have wisdom in the world, whenever they get to a crossroad or they want to take a decision or they want to plan something, they go to their book or they go to their library or they go to their brain to fish out the wisdom. But God gives us fresh wisdom present day wisdom, crossroads wisdom, anytime we have any challenge we come to the Lord because Christ is always there and our wisdom that's always fresh is in Christ of him 
are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and then he tells us in Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 Colossians chapter 2 reading from verse 3 he tells us here in whom are hid all the treasures of the wisdom and the knowledge of God in Christ all the wisdom you'll ever need in your family all the wisdom you'll ever need to live a victorious life all the wisdom you'll ever need to walk straight and to walk uprightly all the wisdom you'll ever need you'll find in Christ and in Christ we have the treasures of wisdom and the knowledge of God and he tells us in verse 6 there in verse 6 it says and ye are therefore as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him Amen. You have received the Lord Jesus Christ. Every challenge of the world rise up in Him is your strength. Walk in Him is your ability that enables you to walk uprightly. It says we are to walk in Christ. And then in verse 7, it says in verse 7, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving and then look at what it says in verse 9 in verse 9 it says verse 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily verse 10 you want to mark this your Bible and ye are complete in him I am complete in him I am complete in him. You know, sometimes when you feel there is no wisdom, when you feel there is, a, there, there is no knowledge, and when you feel, what can I do? When you feel I'm empty. No, you are not empty. You are walking by feeling, walk by faith. Because you are complete in him. Every moment, every day, every time, you'll find the wisdom of Christ sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Fresh wisdom. I say fresh wisdom, fruitful wisdom, final wisdom, problem solving wisdom. The Lord will grant you that wisdom in Jesus' name. Ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Him, is the head of all principality and power. Number two is the fruitful righteousness we have through Christ fruitful righteousness through Christ I come to first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 it says but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us number one wisdom number two righteousness number two righteousness number two righteousness when Christ lives in you the righteousness of Christ of God lives in you there's no temptation coming from outside. There's no trial coming from outside. There's no enticement coming from outside. There's no degradation coming from outside. There's no defilement coming from outside that can erase and wash off and destroy and overcome Christ, the righteousness of God in you. Just understand and have faith and believe the righteousness in you is greater, is stronger than all the temptation coming from outside and you will overcome in Jesus' name. I will overcome in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. For he has made him to be the sin offering to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be in him that we might be made the righteousness of God in him he makes you righteous you remain righteous in Jesus name the blood cleanses you the blood washes you the blood purifies you and the effect of the blood of the blood of jesus you carry everywhere in jesus name sin will not rule over you defilement will not rule over you the world will not rule over you 
righteousness will reign in your life in Jesus name look at Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 21 Romans chapter 5 we're looking at verse 21 it tells us a sin that a sin hath range in the past unto death even now even so my grace reign even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord Christ or reign in your heart reign master Jesus reign master Jesus in my heart in my soul in my spirit in my life in my family let the righteousness of Christ reign and that righteousness will reign in Jesus name fruitful righteousness your life will be fruitful and will bear the fruit of righteousness in Jesus name number three is faultless sanctification by Christ I want you to look at first Corinthians again chapter 1 verse 30 first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 it says for but of him are ye in Christ of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us number one wisdom number two righteousness number three sanctification sanctification there are people who say they find sanctification very tough and very difficult to find but you know when you find Christ you find sanctification when you allow Christ to reign on your heart, sanctification will reign on your heart. When you make Christ to be the king on the throne of your heart and you consecrate and you say, Lord, unto you I surrender everything. Unto you I yield everything. I want you to control. I want you to direct. I want you to reign on the throne of my heart. Sanctification will be a reality in your life. It will be in Jesus' name because Christ is made unto us salvation and sanctification that is a full and faultless sanctification by Christ look at first Thessalonians chapter 5 first Thessalonians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 23 in first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 it says and the very God of peace the very God of peace God will grant you peace. God will maintain the peace in your heart. And that very God of peace sanctify you holy. Is he able? I said, is God able? That God of peace, he has given you peace at salvation. And that God of peace now will sanctify you holy. I believe. I accept. Look at how you say, I accept. It will be yours in Jesus' name. Because the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. And that your whole spirit and soul and body will be preserved, blameless. The Lord will watch over you. He will watch over all the experiences he has given you. He will preserve you blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will he do it? Can he do it? Verse 24, it says, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. It will not fail in your life. It will not fail in my life. It will not fail in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Now we have redemption, we have full redemption. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, unto me. I said unto me, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Perfect redemption is yours. Full redemption is yours. Total redemption is yours. And whatever the world throws at you, you are redeemed in Jesus' name. Whatever Satan tries to throw at you, you are redeemed in Jesus' name. He grants us fresh wisdom every time. 
he grants us fruitful righteousness every time and he grants us faultless sanctification every time and he grants us full redemption full redemption we're looking at colossians chapter uh, colossians we're looking at chapter 1 reading from verse 12 colossians chapter 1 verse 12 giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in the light in verse 13 he is the one who has delivered us from the power of darkness he has delivered me he has delivered me that's what i believe i said that's what i believe that's my experience that will be your experience in jesus name was delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in that kingdom we have wisdom in that kingdom we have righteousness in that kingdom we have sanctification in that kingdom we have full redemption he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and then in verse 14 it says in whom we have not that we're going to have in whom we have not only that we had in whom we have at this present hour every present moment in our life in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin from forgiveness to freedom to fruitfulness to everything the fullness that god has provided we have everything in christ you have everything in christ come further and come deeper into christ and everything will be yours in jesus name now we have wisdom how many people have wisdom here present wisdom the Lord will give you every time at every crossroad in Jesus' name. Now we have righteousness. Anybody having righteousness there? Righteousness in Christ. The Lord confirmed that in Jesus' name. Sanctification. Somebody help me shout the word sanctification. Anybody having sanctification there? God bless you. Sanctification in Christ and then full redemption. Everything is yours. And as we pray now, all this that God has revealed to us, you think you are foolish. Everything that God has provided at Calvary, He gives to the foolish. He gives to the people that feel they are nothing. He gives to the people that don't have any wealth, any might, anything over here. And even the people that have might or wealth or wisdom, whatever, if you come to the Lord with humbleness of heart and with poverty of heart and poverty of speech and say Lord I depend not only on what I have I depend not, not on what I have I depend upon you alone salvation is yours redemption is yours sanctification is yours holiness is yours purity is yours power is yours and everything God provided at Calvary everything is yours and you are complete in him in Jesus name every incompleteness the lord will supply and you'll be complete even before you go tonight in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer and say lord we thank you for what you have revealed and we thank you for what christ did for me for me for me on the cross of calvary tell the lord the lord will answer your prayer he loves you and he wants the fullness of calvary to be yours even tonight